they were making corn risotto. Look at that, bowl of summer. Golden goodness from sweet, sweet corn. Risotto doesn't have to be hard. We're making this today in the pressure cooker. No stir, four minutes. Let's do this. I've got my risotto rice right here. This is arborio rice. It's a really short grain, um, which means it's gonna get nice and starchy when we cook it up. You can also use carnaroli or bamba. And I'm gonna do a Kenji trick to my risotto rice. He always rinses his rice with his cooking liquid, which reserves all of that starch in the liquid, so it ends up in your risotto. Here is my chicken stock. I'm using a store-bought low-sodium chicken stock, but homemade would be even better. And we're just gonna swish it around a little bit. And I'm gonna strain it back into this measuring cup. And you can see how cloudy that stock got. So, I have some nice sweet corn. You wanna do this in the summer when the corn is good, because this is all about the corn. I just have a little mixing bowl that I'm inverting into a big one. And I can stand my corn up here and just slice away. I never slice my corn too deeply. If you cut too deeply, it's gonna be a little bit stringy. It's really important to go back and milk your corn. This is gonna splatter. And now all of that sweet, starchy corn liquid is not going to waste. These cobs are gonna go into the pressure cooker with the rice to help infuse it with even cornier flavor. Now we're gonna make the risotto. It all happens in the pressure cooker. Four minutes. So to start, I'm gonna saute my corn. So I'm gonna set this to saute. So corn doesn't take very long to cook. We just wanna lose that really starchiness. So it's just nice, sweet little pops in our risotto. If you have one of those stove top pressure cookers, it'll probably only take about a minute. But these um, plug-in electric ones don't get as hot. So this might take like five minutes to get the starchiness out. So I've cooked off my corn. You're really just warming it through. All that starchiness is gone now. It's very sweet. And I'm going to return it to that bowl. I take the corn out after cooking it because if it cooked all the way with the rice, it would just get way overcooked. No need to clean the pot. I'm just kind of scraping it out the best that I can. So I've got some more butter and I'm gonna sweat some minced shallot and garlic. I'm gonna do a little bit salt. Salt's gonna season it and also release the moisture so the veggies sweat a little faster. I'm gonna add my rice that I've rinsed off. So now I'm gonna just toast the rice. You'll see the outside just starts to look a little less opaque. My rice is nicely toasted. Got a little bit of dry white wine. Adds a little bit of acidity to the risotto, balances out that sweet corn. Now when I pull my spatula, there's no moisture left and you can hear. The sound has changed, it's sizzling. So your wine is cooked off. And now I'm gonna add my stock. It's good to give it a little stir because that starch begins to settle right away. And we wanna get every bit of it. I'm gonna season it generously with salt right now. Some black pepper. And I'm adding a pinch of sugar because my corn isn't super sweet. If you are lucky and live in a place where you can get really fresh corn, you won't need that. This is just a teaspoon. It really makes a big difference, but you can leave it out if you want. Got a little bit of thyme and bay. And I'm gonna throw my cobs back in and they're gonna add a lot of corny flavor. So I'm gonna set my pressure cooker to low pressure and cook it for four minutes. That's it, no stirring, risotto. I'm gonna blend up half of the corn so I get a nice little creamy puree to fold into my risotto at the end. I put a touch of cream just to help it blend. So this is optional. I like to add a little bit of turmeric to make it a little bit more yellow. You don't have to do this, but I really feel like yellow stuff tastes cornier. You can't even taste it, but you know that tastes like corn. Ooh. Mm. It's like a corn risotto sauna. Lovely. Ooh. So these cobs have a lot of 
flavorful liquid that they're holding on to, so it's really important to go back and milk it again. Make sure you get all of that tasty risotto juice. I'm gonna dig out my bay leaf and thyme. I'm gonna stir in the corn puree and the corn that we already cooked off. I know that looks a little bit neon yellow, but it's gonna look natural once it gets all mixed together, I promise. I'm gonna finish it with some pecorino. I like pecorino over parm. I feel like it's a little bit less nutty and it's just more salty and sharp. Wonderful little one pot wonder. Why not finish it with some more cheese? <laughs> Can't have too much cheese. Corn and cheese, they belong together. Mm. And there's constant corn flavor running through it because of that puree. Interrupted by these little pops of glory, of sweet, sweet corn. And the best part is between the prep and the cooking, this is a 20 minute meal. And it definitely looks like more than 20 minutes on that plate. Hey, Sola, make risotto al salto. It's the Italian risotto pancake. No, I think you should make a low taste flavored risotto. Make risotto al salto. It's crispy on the outside and creamy on the inside. No, you can put cotija cheese and some spicy mayo and some cilantro. No, 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 no. So good. Trust me, risotto al salto. Come on. No, a low taste. Al salto. A low taste. Al salto. Low taste. Stop, stop. I know what I'm doing. 